This is an inexpensive plastic recorder. It's the kind of recorder that students would use when they're first uh, learning the instrument. This is the soprano recorder. It's normally the uh, highest recorder that we use in the orchestra. The sopranino is used uh, for special effects. This is similar to the plastic instrument that students use, except this is made of wood, and it has a much richer, clearer sound. I began directing the uh, Mid-Peninsula Recorder Orchestra in 1988. I, uh, it was the, during the second half of the 1987-88 uh, season, and that's because uh, there were auditions for a new director uh, from September through December of 87. And I have directed the orchestra ever since. This is a uh, Sopranino recorder. It's the smallest recorder we normally use in uh, the recorder orchestra. Uh, it's very, uh, it has a sound very similar to that of a piccolo and plays in roughly the same range. This is an alto recorder. This is probably the most popular size of the entire recorder family. It's also the size that's used for most of the solo music for the instrument. The tenor recorder uh, plays the middle parts in the orchestra. It has a rather uh, nice deep sound, but not too loud. Basses come in several different varieties. One can be blown uh, directly, as this one can. Some even have bent necks to uh, facilitate playing. However, they all uh, play in the same range. They are not really solo instruments. As a matter of fact, they sound very puny when, they, uh, when they're played alone. But when you put them with a group of recorders, they really increase in volume and depth. Up to a few years ago, the lowest instrument you would normally find in a recorder ensemble was the bass recorder, which we just heard. However, uh, recently, larger and larger sizes are gaining favor, and they really add a lot to the uh, uh, sound of an ensemble of recorders. This is a great bass recorder. It's twice the size of the tenor. And as you can see, this does have a crook or vocal in which, to which the performer uh, blows. <laughs> a contrabass recorder. It's twice the size of a bass recorder. Now you notice that the great bass and the bass are square and the reason for that is because it's much easier and less expensive to build an instrument that's square than it is to build an instrument that's round. So this is very similar to some organ pipes you may have seen. <laughs> electronic tuner in the uh, orchestra because it's really the best way of uh, arriving at an objective pitch without getting the personal element into play. several famous composers to uh, write for the recorder, names that most people know. There's of course Johann Sebastian Bach, he employed it in uh, two of his Brandenburg concertos as well as some of his cantatas. And then of course there's George Frederick Handel who uh, used it in, uh, as a solo instrument, wrote some, probably some of the best solo sonatas for the uh, recorder that we have. And of course there's Georg Philippe Telemann who is the uh, most prolific composer in history. He wrote uh, probably the most in the most idiomatic style for the instrument. And uh, we also have uh, Vivaldi, Antonio Vivaldi, and uh, he uh, 
He was known primarily for his uh, recorder concertos uh, for the Sopranino recorder. They're very flamboyant and they're very demanding on the performer. The orchestra has uh, been very fortunate in that uh, we've had a very loyal membership throughout the years that uh, keeps coming back even when dues are raised because we need to uh, uh, raise more revenue for rehearsal facilities and so forth. I think that one of the reasons we are doing so well financially is just we have the right kind of people, the right area, and a little bit of luck.